Take control of the airwaves now. In the name of Jesus, speak through me and uh, speak only your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let it fall on good ground and produce a mighty harvest for your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I love, I, I'm going to read now from the New Living Translation. Um, because it really just kind of breaks it down for us in Isaiah 53, beginning at verse 3. The New Living Translation says, He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Come on, people of God. Yet it was our weaknesses that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. We're talking about Resurrection Sunday. Ah, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment from, for his own sins. But he was pierced, verse 5. He was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Verse eight, unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants and that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. Verse 10 says, but it was the Lord's good plan. Somebody say good plan. It was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous for he will bear all of their sins. That's Isaiah 53. And we began at verse three down to verse 11. I want to use for a thought today. It was necessary. Yeah. I want, to look, I want us to use for a thought today. It was necessary. What Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, what Jesus experienced was necessary. The rejection that he experienced, it was necessary. The anguish that he experienced, it was necessary. The brutality that was laid upon him, it was necessary. The stripes that he took for us, it was necessary. The blood that he shed, how about shed? It was necessary. The sacrifices that our Lord made, it was necessary. Ah, and not only did he die, his death was necessary, but his resurrection was necessary too. I'm thanking God today that he found it necessary to die for us. He found it necessary to get up out of the grave for us, to take on our sins, to take on our, our sins. Uh, the, the flesh has acted, acted out unseemly in so many ways, but the Lord made, he, he found it necessary to redeem us. He found it necessary. And why is that? Because God needed somebody, well, what we all need, and let's just say it like this, we needed somebody, uh, we needed somebody who would be solid 
enough and who will be able to withstand and to stand up to hard times and to crises. We needed somebody who would be solid, who would be able to, uh, to, to endure hard things and to endure the sufferings of this world. Someone, we needed somebody besides ourselves who would be able uh, to stand in the gap for us. We needed somebody who could be consistent. And if we be honest, most of us are inconsistent in our allegiance, number one, to God, and then number two, to each other, to our families. We're, a lot of times, we're inconsistent. How how can I say that? We're inconsistent because we do it when we feel like doing it. We go when we feel like we want to go. We only do what we want to do when we want to do it. Uh, but, but Jesus, he's consistent. He is not swayed by how our attitudes are before him. He still remains consistent. He remains solid. He's always there. He said, the Bible says it like this. He says, Lo, I am with you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the earth. He has been consistent. He's been faithful to us. He has never rejected his faithful stance with us. He has always been a very present help in the time of trouble. Every time we get in a situation, the Lord shows up on our behalf and he delivers us and he brings us out. He brings us through. He brings us over. He carries us when we cannot even carry ourselves. He carries us through and he never drops us. He never abandons, abandons us. He never withholds his grace and his mercy for us. He's always there. He's consistent. We also needed someone who would be pure and without sin or a sinful nature. And if we read back in that scripture in Isaiah 53, it talked about how he took on the sins of the world. He was God and he was when he was Jesus and he was without sin. He was smitten of sin. He was smitten of our sin. He carried on our transgressions. He put it on and he wore it like it was his own garment because he knew that today it would be necessary uh, for somebody to be able to stand in the gap for us. He, We needed somebody that would be without sin. We needed someone who would be pure enough. We needed someone who did not have a sinful nature who had never sinned before. And all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, ah, he has been without sin. He became sin. He took on ours, but it wasn't his own. But he loved us so much. And he knew that we needed a necessary savior. We needed somebody that could be able to stand up for us and fight for us. And that there there would be no spot or blemish or any such thing that would be on his name. Hallelujah. It was necessary. Wow. We needed someone who would be able to save us. Hallelujah. We needed someone who would be able to save us from sin. There is no other God that can save us from sin. There is no other situation. There is no other system that can save us from sin. Only Jesus Christ is able to save us from sin. You cannot burn incense and get rid of sin. Come on. You cannot use your crystals and get rid of sin. You cannot call on Buddha and get rid of sin. You cannot call on Confucius and get rid of your sin. You cannot burn sage and get rid of your sins. Uh, what can wash us? Ah, what can wash us ah, whiter than snow? What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It was necessary uh, for us to have somebody who could save us. And I'm so glad. Come on. Let's give God praise for saving us. Hallelujah. For being able to save us, able to deliver us, able to make us whole again, able to heal us, able to redeem us, able to snatch us out of sin and 
put us on a straight street. He is able, ah, he's able, I hear you, Lord. He's able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that we can ask or think. It is not according to our goodness, but it's according to the power that worketh within us. Come on and thank God for saving us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. He's able. Wow. It was necessary. We also, we needed, we needed an advocate. Hallelujah. We needed an advocate for us who would not reject us. My God. Who would not reject us even though we would be guilty of sin. Yeah, yeah. We needed somebody. We needed a mediator uh, that could go between us and our sin and make sure that the Lord would still keep his eye on us because he cannot stand the appearance of sin. And so we thank God for being, for Jesus Christ being an advocate for us, for Jesus Christ being our go-between guy, for him being the middleman for us. Come on. He's being our middleman. He's the one that stands <clears throat> that stands in the gap for us. He is the gracious one who looks beyond our faults and he sees our need. Hallelujah. He looks beyond our faults and he sees our need. We needed an advocate. We needed a savior. We needed a redeemer. We needed a waymaker. Come on, somebody. We needed a waymaker. We needed someone that when we got in a jam and some of us are in jams right now and it is necessary for you to understand that you need Jesus Christ hallelujah this is resurrection Sunday this is a Sunday that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus right Christ and it has been necessary mm, yeah, it's been necessary for us to have a redeemer like this. I, I Listen, I just had a moment, I had a flashback because I remember, I remember being a rank sinner. I remember being uh, consumed with sins and consumed with my faults, consumed with bad behavior consumed with making bad decisions. But Jesus Christ, he stood up on my behalf and he said, oh, oh, she needs me. She needs me. Uh, if she just calls for me, I'll be there and I will answer for her. I'm necessary. Will she just turn her face towards me and she will realize that I've been here all the time. So I just had a flashback right there and I'm thinking about the goodness of the Lord, about how he saved me from sin and how he redeemed me from the hand of the enemy. I know my redeemer lives. I know that Jesus Christ is Lord. I know that there is no God like him in all of the earth. He has been a necessary savior for me. He's been a necessary help for me. He's been a bridge over troubled waters for me. He's been my way in and my way out. There have been some things that I have gotten into that I needed somebody who was going to be able to pull me out and would not hold it over my head and would not keep, keep reminding me of, of the fact that I was a mess, but he said, I want to look beyond your faults and I want to see your need. I want to see, I want you to see how much I am there for you if you will just ask for my assistance. Somebody said, Lord, help me right now. Hallelujah. Lord, help me right now. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me in the places where nobody else knows that I need your help. I'm haciendo. Yeah. No. Do you know this, that while we are in these secret places with God, hallelujah, while we are abiding in the secret places with God, in our own sanctuaries today, in our homes, listen, while we are there, I want you to spend the, the, next, the next few days just beginning to thank him. Don't let Resurrection Sunday get away from you and you don't recall the fact that Jesus rose for you, that Jesus got up for you, that Jesus is still redeeming you, that it's a day later, but he's still redeeming us. It's 
is over 2,000 years later. He's still redeeming us. He's still saving us. He's still lifting us up. He's still rebuking the devourer for our sake. And I believe we ought to bless God right now. Hallelujah. 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 It was necessary. It was necessary. It was necessary. Somebody say it was necessary. I was a necessary factor in the Lord going to the cross. I, it was necessary for him to go because I, there was nothing else that would have been able to help me other than he took the hit for me. I'm so glad he was a hit man for me. I'm so glad that he stood in the gap for me. I'm so glad that he did not come down off the cross until he knew that I could be reconciled back to him and then he knew that I would be saved until he knew that deliverance was available to me, until he knew that all of my sins could be washed away. I'm glad he hung up there until it was over with. I'm glad he stayed up there. And then how he went down in the grave. I'm glad he stayed there until he secured my total victory, until he secured my total deliverance, until he secured my total total healing and restoration and somebody ought to give God praise oh, for doing it. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He didn't stop until he completed the work. He didn't stop until he knew that it was a sealed deal, until it was already, already done for us. And I bless the name of the Lord. It was, it was, it was necessary for me. It was necessary. Hallelujah. It was necessary. Wow, it was necessary. I pray today that this resurrection day, this one, we, we, you know, we've gone through routines over the years of Resurrection Day, Easter Sunday, the Lord's Day. We've gone through routines and ritualistic things. We've, we've done some of the same thing over and over and over again. And oftentimes, not even thinking about the cost that was paid for us, uh, for us to even to celebrate Resurrection Day. But I pray today that this be one of the resurrection, that this be a res resurrection day, the Lord's day, the day that we celebrate. Hallelujah. His getting up out the grave. Hallelujah for redeeming us. I, I pray that, that this will be a resurrection day that we will never forget. We will never forget that he pulled us to a side, that he pulled us away from all of the rat race. He pulled us away from the routine and the ritualistic stuff that we have been doing. He's pulled us away from himself and say, now do you know that this is an individual thing? I took the hit for you individually. I took it for you one by one. I Listen, yes, I died for the sins of the whole world, but for you in particular, I gave my life for you. I gave up, I gave up, I gave up my seat, hallelujah, in heaven to come to this sinful world to take all of your sins, and take all the take the hit for it just so today you will be able to say that i am lord that i am the savior of the world that i am a risen savior i live and i live in you wow may this be a resurrection day you will never forget you will always remember being on lockdown yeah, you'll always remember this resurrection, that this is the first one in all of our lives, not because of sickness, not because of a disease that we're all carrying in our bodies, but because the Lord has ordered us to steal away and to come and spend time with him so that we can recognize and point our finger towards him and say, but God, you are the God of all the earth. You're the God of all the earth. And so, Father, we trust you. Let's pray. Father, we trust you that this day 
a day we've never seen before, is a day that we will celebrate you. We, may we never forget the fact that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. We're healed in our emotions. We're healed in our bodies. We're healed in our minds. We're healed from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. We're healed in this nation. We're healed uh, in every nation that your healing is taking place even now. There is no disease. There is no sickness. There is no trouble that you cannot deliver us from because you took the hit over 2,000 years ago. You took the hit on our behalf. And it's for this, Father, that we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for taking our place. We thank you, Lord God, for bearing us up in your arms. Oh God, and for remembering us as we remember you today. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Thank God, amen. God bless you. I love you. Have a great day.